Hello, and welcome to another video looking at whether a game that plays like PUBG is possible on retro hardware, like the Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo. In the last video I looked at a 16-bit solution for the stealth aspect of the game, specifically simulating the line of sight gameplay that all the cover gives you in a game like PUBG. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link to it here and in the description below. As you can see, it gives an interesting viewpoint for a 16-bit game, allowing for you to be surprised by uncovering hidden players that are already within range of your screen. But the visual aspect of the stealth gameplay is only half the story in PUBG. Equally important is the sound design. A lot of the time you get many more clues about where an enemy is by the sounds that they are making rather than actually being able to see them. Now, although PUBG is a 3D game, with the sounds all being generated within a 3D space, At the end of the day, they're often heard on just headphones or a couple of speakers. This works in the game because although it's in 3D, there is very little in the way of verticality, which effectively makes it 2D when it comes to positioning the sound. Based on the way you are looking, the sound is positioned between the left and right speakers, which is enough to give you the direction the sound is coming from within the game world. The fact that the sound is represented in 2D in PUBG is good news for a retro version of course, but although the Super Nintendo had stereo, the first Sega Genesis did not. However, even if we assume stereo sound, there is still a problem. Because our game is being played top down, there is no way of telling if a sound is coming from the top left corner or the bottom left corner of the screen. This isn't really a problem for the 3D PUBG, as knowing it's to the left of you is often enough. But for the 2D representation, ironically, it won't work, so we need a different solution. My approach would be to indicate whether a sound is made by drawing an icon at the edge of the screen in the direction the sound came from. So if we assume a sniper hiding in the top right of the screen here, when the rifle is fired we draw a sound icon in the direction the sound came from, like this. So here's how that would work, assuming a few random rifle shots from different areas. Now you may think that that would give away exactly where the enemy is, but in fact it's no different than the 3D version. If the enemy was here for instance, we'd project a ray through the enemy to the edge of the screen and draw the sound icon there. That way you'd have an idea, but not certainty, about where the enemy is. If the enemy was already visible on screen, we could either draw the icon with the enemy, or not draw it at all, as you'd know the enemy was making that sound, especially with muzzle flashes or whatever as well. The sound icon idea would work with an enemy walking as well. We'd just use a smaller icon and have it visible for a shorter time. So what you'd see, assuming the enemy was in cover, would be this. Now let's add that system to the line of sight test and see how it looks. You can see it gives you a good clue, but no certainty, which is how it works on PUBG. So how would the 16-bit consoles handle this icon? Well, there is no sprite scaling on the hardware, so you'd have to store a few different sizes for the different volumes of sound, but that would be fine. But how about the direction? Well, storing two extra frames of rotation would allow you to use the horizontal and vertical mirroring to produce eight different directions from the three frames. So we would have nine frames that give us three different scales and eight different directions. And we could easily store more frames if we wanted more sizes or smoother rotations. As to fading out the icon with the sound, that would be easy on the Super Nintendo as it has sprite fading. But the Sega Genesis does not. So we could try a few different palettes for some kind of fading, but I think using the different sizes we already have so the icon gets smaller as the sound fades works pretty well. So let's put these 16-bit icons along with some 16-bit sounds into the line of sight test and see how it works. I think it works pretty well, and I'm sure it could be refined in many ways to work better than this quick test. Overall, I'm pretty sure this method could be used to give you the kind of gameplay feedback the sound design in PUBG gives its players. Let me know in the comments if you have any better ideas or ways to improve it, and let me know if you'd like me to continue with this series. And as always, please subscribe and click the notification bell. 
Until next time, bye-bye.